In this chapter, we're going to deal with the idea of electric potential. Hopefully from previous courses, you have already seen how potential uh, relates to potential energy as well as to electric field. This is just a way to show you all that again all at once. It should be basically review, so we'll go through this fairly quickly. So first off, the question is uh, asking us about the electric field strength between two parallel plates given some amount of energy and some amount of charge. And all this happens between two parallel conducting plates. And having parallel conducting plates is really, really nice because as soon as you have parallel plates, you know that you have a uniform electric field. And we love uniform electric field because we can know that we don't need to use calculus. Quick picture here. So somehow you have two parallel plates and let's say one side is positive, one side is negative. Somehow there's a potential in between the two of them. So there's some kind of delta V, which causes the thing to have some electric field this way. So you have an ion, let's say it's a positive ion. I, I don't really know with some Q and this ion following the electric field being accelerated by this electric field moves over here straight across and you end up over here somewhere with some final kinetic energy. That's what it means by accelerated to a certain amount of energy. So how do all these things relate to each other? Well, in most cases, I like to start with the thing we're after and then see how we can work backwards. So the thing we are actually after is the electric field strength. So the magnitude of the electric field. Well, we know that the electric field, if you integrate over a certain amount of displacement, you get the change in potential. There's a negative sign in there just to get the sign right. But here we're not given even the sign, of the charge of the ion. So we're mostly working with magnitudes here. So we'll slap absolute value signs everywhere. And in this case, because of the uniform electric field, the E just comes out multiply by some kind of change in distance, which is the separation of the plates. The assumption of course, is that the ion went from one plate all the way to the other plate. And that's usually what we go with from there. We can then relate potential with potential energy. And then we can also say that the change in potential energy is the negative change in kinetic energy, which is what we want because we know the final kinetic energy. Now, again, all these things we can slab absolute value sign for this question because the sign is not really clear and there you go. So we work backwards to get back here. So one thing to make a note of is they use this wording double charged. Some of you may not be familiar with that. And so first off, let me say that double charge doesn't mean two coulombs. It means that you're either having two extra electron or missing two electron. Double charge in this sense means the charge is the same as two elementary charge. Now, again, they don't say if we're having a positive ion or negative ion, but we just assume that the signs work out appropriately and it goes the right direction. So in this case, you could convert this into some number of coulombs. But you'll see that in a second, we won't really need to do that because the next step is we want to find out the change in voltage by the change in energy sorry by Q and the energy in this case is given by kilo electron volts. And since it's not given in joules, but electron volts, we can just cancel out that with the elementary charge without having to convert everything to coulombs or joules per coulomb. And that's why it's so common for problems like these to be worked out in electron volts as an energy unit rather than joules, because when we get to individual ions, the elementary charge is a much more natural unit for the charge than the Coulomb is. So we know that we have a change of potential of 16 kilovolts. Then we can use that to work out my electric fields. Pretty simple question, really. Again, we're just going to put absolute value sign everywhere. So we're dropping those negative signs. If it ever comes up, then we have 16 kilovolts divided by the separation of the distance that you accelerate over, which is 0.02 meters. And that works out to be so many volts per meter, which same unit as Newton per Coulomb, which is what I expect for my electric field. 
to demonstrate that, volt meter, a volt is a joule per coulomb divided by meter, whereas a joule is newton meter because work is force times displacement. And then that meter cancels out and you are left with newtons per coulomb. Fairly simple question just to see how electric field relates to electric potential, how electrical potential relates to potential energy and through conservation energy also kinetic energy. And this question is so simple because we're dealing with just a uniform electric field with parallel conducting plates. And that's why most systems you'll see will involve parallel plates.